Well, we're here today because Milburn Decker, you know Milburn Decker, his birthday is this weekend. We're filming this on June 25th, 2022. And his daughter, Lynn, my wife, had requested that we sit down and talk with him to find out more about what life was like as a child for her father and what he knows of his parents and grandparents and how far back in history we go. That's very interesting. But it's more not just for Lynn, but it's for all of Milburn's grandchildren, great-grandchildren, because this is to be preserved forever. So he wanted to know a little bit more. He wishes he knew a little bit more about his parents and grandparents. So we're going to make sure you know about your grandfather or great-grandfather, as the case may be. So Milburn, I guess let's just start from the beginning. Oh, I just do want to point out that uh, he is 87 years old, I will tell you that, but the only thing wrong with this man is his hearing, and he had a little trouble uh, while his profession was going on at Indianapolis, we'll talk about his profession, and his hearing is not as good, so I'm going to be talking a little loud, and he may as well, but that's it, he's perfect otherwise, so, so and, Milburn, and a little slower, <laughs> and a little slower sometime, but we all are, yeah, so let's start from the beginning, uh, when were you born, where were you born? And who your parents are? I was born uh, June 26, 1935, by four four six. And mom and dad, is, uh, dad's name Jim, mom and name Joe. Right where we're sitting. When you say that, you mean literally about right here in the sunroom? In the next room. Is that right? Uh, this is added on, but the room in the next door, through that mm -hmm. door, was where I was born, in that room. Okay. So, it's still the same room. I just remodeled it, but it's, the foundation is the same. Okay. So look at the camera for a moment. Okay. <laughs> He's, he, just, just a moment. That's all. We're, He's 87 years old. Look at my gray hair. Look at his. He doesn't have any. He doesn't have any. He looks great. Feels great. Let's hope that he goes on for years. Yeah. Is that telling me, church, you can, you can buy that color. Yeah, but you don't. You don't. <laughs> So, so you were born here in Jabez, Kentucky. It was great then. It was what? The post office was great. G R A P E. Grape, Kentucky. Grape, Kentucky. So I learned th something already. So when did it change to Jabez? Uh, it changed when the lake came in and 40. They quit going across the river. We got her made from a little place called Israel over toward Monticello. And they carried it on a horse. And they had to cross the river. And they had a bird boat. And the mailman ferried his horse across the river every day, <laughs> all except Sunday. And there wasn't no holiday back then, uh, Christmas. And, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, it would, he'd come to a little place in the bottom. That was in the valley before the lake came in, and it was called Great Little Store and a Post Office. And in '47, he moved out and and went up to Bernetti. That was mm -hmm. he had a post office up there. But then when mo our post office moved to Cedar Crest, Cedar Crest, then we had then we had a post office called Address Cedar Crest. Okay, and. Um, that's where I went in the service in Cedar Crest. Okay. And that was my address. And then, sometime or other after I left home, mm -hmm. uh, they moved to Jabez. Is there a grape Kentucky today? No. No. No, they, they done away with it. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but when it's uh, over with, they done okay. away with it. So you were born June 26, 1935? What is your earliest recollection of life? Uh, here. Just, just what do you remember the, first? I remember the, the, my sister was born, my younger sister was born February of 38. Mom was still in the bed with her because back then they stayed mm -hmm. in the bed nine days. Okay. After the child was born. All right. You, you here, at, here at home. That. Here at home. Yeah, here yeah. at home, mm -hmm. yeah. And they couldn't get out of the bed for nine days. Mm -hmm. And we was over in the woods. They took me with them. I was two years old. 
and they were cutting wood. It was in February. And my older brother, Marvin, was uh, he 10 years older than me. And we'd mess around with the or he would mess around with the axe. And I'd feed him little sticks up to him, and he's chopping them off with the uh, axe. Well, I got the too close to the axe, and he got my finger. He cut that finger. And that, and they carried me to the house and bandaged up. I didn't even go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was the, mm-hmm. that was the first thing I remember. So, so three years old or something like Two that. Years. Two years old. Okay. So tell me a little bit about this place. So he's, he's living in his home place where he grew up and is made of beautiful and we'll see the property. Well, of course, a lot of you know what it is. But um, tell me a little bit at that time about your what your property was like and what what you used it for. Um, the farm, uh, we put in, like everybody else, maybe 10 acres of corn. 10 acres, okay. And that fed the horses and mules all okay. year. And it, it horses and mules. for meal. Okay. For uh, cornbread, mm-hmm. okay. We took the turn. You had you had the grist mill, mm-hmm. like the, down at the post office. He had the grist mill, and uh, I was young, and of course, like I said, I wasn't even very old when the late mm-hmm. came in. He came in, and he left in '47, and so I took the corn to the mill. And I wasn't big enough to put the tug a bushel of corn. We eat one bushel of corn a week in cornbread, mm-hmm. and I, and the birds and the chickens and everything else. But anyway, Dad had put the corn on the mule. I'd take it to the grist mill. The guy who'd run the mill. I'd take it off and grind it and put it back on the horse mm-hmm. front. And I'd bring it back. And how old were you at that time? Uh, well, I. Probably 11, okay. something like that, 10 or 11. Okay. Uh, brothers and sisters, I, I, I know you had a bunch. There uh, was 11 of us. 11. And I was the youngest boy. Had one sister younger than me. Uh, my brother, older brother, was 20 years older than me. I was two years old when they got mm-hmm. married. I never remember him being at home or nothing. Mm-hmm. And he was uh, uh, 10 years old. Or twenty years older than mm-hmm. me, and uh, and then I had, of course, there's seven boys of us, and I was the youngest boy. Now I'm the only one left, yeah. and uh, Lord been good to me. Yeah. But uh, that uh, uh, one brother, Marvin, almost raised me. He's ten years older than me. Mm-hmm. Almost raised you, yeah. And uh, of course, mm-hmm. mom had so much to do, mm-hmm. and she turned. That's the way it was. It just kid rage kicked. Yeah. And then uh, Marvin had a tragic accident that, that lo- he lost his life in an accident. Marvin did, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're the last one left at 87 years old, but you had a brother that lived to be how old? The oldest? 94. 94. And that's Osborne. And I remember stories about Osborne that he would drive down to. Uh, was it? Uh, it was Texas. Fifty miles the other side of Dallas. Fifty miles the other side of Dallas, probably at age eighty or long, or, or better, the right? The last trip he made was, I believe he was eighty-two. I think he was eighty-two, something like that. Never like stopped, that. hardly did he. And, and never, never stopped except to pull <laughs> in the rest area yeah. and eat a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, that's hard to figure. So, so who who were you closest to growing up? Who did you go to school with, with your siblings? You mean um, you, family? Yeah, family. The closest was when I was growing up with my brother, that Martin, that mm-hmm. Ronnie, and my boy dad, Kat, uh, Melinda. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's ten years, like I said, he's ten years older than me, and he took care of me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he he uh, Give me my first job. I worked for him after he got married, and, and well, he just uh, he just yeah. almost a dad. Well, wow. that's it. Well, what what, what about your your, your father? Um, when did he pass away? He passed away in seventy two. Seventy two at at what age? Eighty two. Okay, 
and your mother was 92 when she and passed mom away. Was so they lived to be. She, good. she stayed in a nursing home for like three years of her life. Mm -hmm. Her life, two years. What I remember about your mom, of course, Granny is what everybody yeah. knew her of that uh, were grandparents or grandchildren, but. Um, in, in in her last days, even or at least up till then, she liked to do poetry. I remember her citing poetry, but you told me that every chance she could get, she would sing. Yeah, she gospel liked, song. Uh, she liked to sing. She sang the church. Church song. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they'd request somebody sing a song like mm -hmm. we do now. If anybody wanted to sing before service, mm -hmm. they'd get up and sing. So mom always mm -hmm. sang. What, if anything, did she or your dad tell them about, tell you about their childhood growing up? Anything that was interesting? Um, I bet her, and of course, um, I forgot a lot of what she did yeah. today, mm -hmm. but I did ask her about Grandpa, and he owned about 200 acres, and it's uh, uh, two miles up the road mm -hmm. from here. and. Um, so, uh, and she told me that uh, she had to help on the farm, and just like the rest mm -hmm. of the kids. And she had three brothers. One of them got shot when she was 16. He got killed. Mm -hmm. Somebody shot him mm -hmm. in uh, his apple orchard. He had okay. an apple orchard, my uncle did. Okay. And uh, somebody had been stealing apples, mm -hmm. so he went up there. And they caught him up there, and they, they killed him. Really? And she was 16 years old. Wow. And she never did forget that because yeah. he's a lot older than her, and it, mm -hmm. that was his pet. Yeah. So, so, to your knowledge, everybody that went back were, were farmers? Yeah. Everybody were, was farmers around here? Well, they they farmed and worked a public job, do if they okay. could get it. Okay. And, you know, Dad helped build the locks and stuff like that. Okay. And, so he helped bring the lake in? Yep. No, this, no, this is when the old river. At one time, Cumberland River, uh, when it started way up bur above Burnside, somewhere up, mm -hmm. Cumberland Falls is the yeah. beginning okay. of it. Yeah. And it ended up at uh, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Well, it went right through Nashville. And I've seen a complete valley covered with water where it would flood. Mm -hmm. Even when I was going to school, it would flood the whole valley. Wow. The water would back up the people's houses and mm -hmm. they'd use a rowboat. Mm -hmm. It didn't last long, but um, then they thought, well, we better build flood control. So they put in a dam with locks. Mm -hmm. And they put locks in it so the steamboat could run all year long. Uh, the steamboat could only run when they water in the river, mm -hmm. and mom and dad said the lake could get down, or the river would get down to low and dry weather, that you could ride a horse across the river. And what year about would that have been? Uh, they built the lock in 1920, yeah, 19, 19 or 20, something yeah. like that. You told me that your, your dad's birthday would have been yesterday. Is that right? Yes. 132 years ago. Yeah, right. He's born June twenty fourth. Uh, what? What? Do the math for me. What year was he born? Do you know? So he would have been born in uh, well, I guess eighteen. Well, anyway, when was he born? Oh, Dad. Yeah, June the twenty fourth, nineteen and uh, eighteen and ninety. Eighteen ninety. Okay, there you go. Thank and, you. Yeah, I wasn't able to do um, that. Yeah. He was one of twins. He he had a twin brother named mm -hmm. Joe. So okay. Go. Okay. And somewhere I've got a record of the doctor. It used to be up at Jabez. Mm -hmm. uh, he had an office there, the doctor did. And uh, he, I had a record where he went to, down to the, in the bottom, in the valley. I call it a bottom. Mm -hmm. But for uh, my grandchildren, I better say Right, 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 right. Uh, but, uh, the doctor had a record. He went down there and delivered two boys from mm -hmm. Green for Green Decker, and that was my grandpa. Did did they know back then? Nah, they they didn't know there were going to be twins until they came out, did they? No, no, I didn't think so. <laughs> no, eighteen ninety. Uh, what? How far back 
do you go for your grandparents that you know of? Uh, I go back to 1939. Uh, 18? No, I mean, as far as, yeah, your grand, your great-grandparents, how far back in history I, do you get? My great-grandparents, I, I can go back to the one that was in the Civil War. He mm -hmm. was born in, or he went in the Civil War. and uh, My granny, my grandmother was, uh, how let's see, she was born in 55. Now, 1855. 1855, yeah. And now, <laughs> I don't remember when she was born. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. But, uh, but she was born in 1855. But okay. My grandpa was in the, mm -hmm. uh, my great grandpa was in the Civil War. Yeah. It, when she was five, six years old, seven, yeah. or something like okay. that. And, and we don't mean to turn this into a history lesson, but it's interesting. As you said, Kentucky was divided between. Union and yes. Confederates, but your great grandfather was in he the was Union. Union, the Union yeah. officer. That was uh, insult to the Deckers. Insult to the Deckers. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. Uh, <laughs> Once you finally told them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. of us just bummed to the South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people but are. But he yeah. did get a pension, so that mm -hmm. helped. There you go. Okay. So that's as far back as you know. Anybody in your, in your yes, lineage, right? Yes, they told me about yeah. Mom told me about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think she, she never did remember her mm -hmm. grandpa. Okay. Was your dad in World War One? No. No? He never did go in. Okay. In World War One, he had uh, three or four kids. Okay. And, okay. Um, had three, and so mm -hmm. they didn't call him. Okay. So, so we always hear these stories, even from my generation, but that's exaggerating. But the next one, you had to walk two miles uphill and both ways. Both ways. <laughs> but, but tell me about your walk from, from this house. And again, to, to school, how long it was. It didn't matter, of course, if it was winter, if it was raining, snowing. But tell me about that walk to school well, each morning. I started when I was six years old. Started school when I was six. Okay. And back then, we had a seven month year. Okay. We started in July. And of course, we ended up in February. Mm -hmm. And I went to the valley. And Age Bottom School was the name of the school. Mm -hmm. That was the name I of the school. I even got okay. some report cards from Age okay. Bottom School. Okay. And I remember my teachers and stuff like that. But uh, we, uh, uh, had to walk, and if you walked around the road, there's a road that you could go, mm -hmm. and it was over three miles if you stayed down the road to get to that school. One way. One way. But we cut through the woods, we cut, and it was about two miles. They give us one hour to get to school and one hour to get back. So school took up at eight. We left home at seven every mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. But before you left home, you had to have a day's work done. We was on the old sun time then. Yeah. And uh, it was different. Yeah. yeah. It is. How many were, when, when you were six years old and, and walking to school, and uh, again, the house you live in now is, is the same location, but completely different house as you rebuilt it, but it was a very small home. How many people lived in this home at that time when you were six years old? In here? Yes. Um, when I was six years old, um, from Roxy down, okay. and that was she was born in '23. Okay. And the rest of us all the way down by okay. my sister, which was born in '38. Okay. Uh, Roxy would be 100 next year. Yeah, mm -hmm. she left home uh, pretty soon after. Well, in the fall, mm -hmm. I tried okay. started school in July. Mm -hmm. Were you? Were you poor? Did you think you were poor? Did you, what, what was your, what was your thought growing up in regards to finances or just how, how your place was in society? Well, back then, I don't think we even thought of anything mm -hmm. back then. The kids, we never seen the newspaper. We mm -hmm. didn't have a phone for all, or we didn't have a, um, radio for a mm -hmm. long time, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost the wartime. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. before we even got a, I mean, the war was almost over before okay. we even got a radio. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's, uh, we didn't even think about that. I can't remember when I was going to school. Of course, I was uh, six years old in 41. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it was over in 45, so I wasn't very old even right. during the war. Mm -hmm. But I never even thought about the war. I had a brother, Osborne is in there. Mm -hmm. He was in there. He was gone from 39 to 45. Mm -hmm. And I missed him, but yeah. I never thought about, you didn't think of death back then or yeah. nothing. You, you don't remember your parents talking about or being worried about or getting letters Mom from Osborne? Did. Dad didn't worry. Yeah, He's like me. He, he was concerned sometimes, but yeah. you never know it. Mm -hmm. He didn't show it. Now, Mom was worried all the time about mm -hmm. uh, Osborne. And Ernest, as, uh, the third one down, or the second one down, Osborne was the third from the top. And he was in prison. He killed a man. And they sent him up to uh, prison for Eight years. Now, this was your brother? This was That was my brother. Okay. Can, can that we... was his name was Ernest. Okay. And him and his buddy was out drunk. Okay. Out here at the old church house. Okay. And they got in a fight. Mm -hmm. And he, okay. just, he just killed him. Yeah, okay. They wasn't intending to do He just shot him. Right, right. And uh, I mean, he wasn't intending to kill him. Mm -hmm. But he got uh, eight years out of it. Okay. He got life. And uh, his mom... But I don't know how she stood it. Um, she lost, during the war, from the time Osborne went in, she lost a, a dad, a mom. Osborne went in the service. Ernest went in the jail, in prison. And I had a sister to die, my older sister mm -hmm. died. All in, I don't know how. So your older sister, who, who was that? My sister died. If she'd lived a few days, she'd have been 19. She died at 18. And what was her name? Wilma. Wilma. And what did she die of? What did she die of? Uh, the doctor said she had diabetes. But okay. now, who knows? Yeah. They didn't have no way to check, yeah. but he said she had diabetes. And, and how old were you at the time when she died? How old were you when she died? She died in 39. Okay, and so four years I old. I was four years old. Okay. I remember her one time. Because I cut my wrist up there. Mm -hmm. You can see the scar. Show them the scar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I fell on a, a lid, a okay. tin lid, mm -hmm. and cut. And she carried me to the house. Oh, okay. And that's, that's all I ever okay. remember. Yeah. Now, when she died, um, they kept her here in the living room. There wasn't no war, uh, funeral home. There. So they wasn't just... no funeral home. She stayed yeah. here. And her casket, they got my uncle to build a casket, and they kept it in the living room here, yeah. right in that room. I don't she stayed there for two days. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't even remember. I mm -hmm. remember the casket, but I yeah. don't remember. But that wasn't unusual, was it? Isn't that no, normally no, what happened? That was normal. Somebody would pass, they would have the casket in the home for a couple yeah. of days. And, and was that for community visitation? Is that what it was? Anybody yeah. wanted to come hey, pay their respects? People could come in. Yeah. You know, okay. They did. They come in off and on. Mm -hmm. But uh, they uh, they had to dig the grave by hand back then. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, there wasn't no vault. They just put the casket in the ground. There's a wooden box. And they mm -hmm. just put it in the ground. It's, but uh, that was... Um, uh, that's, uh, that's all I remember of her. Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't very old. And, at well, four years old, yeah. you forget a lot. What was what was school like? Did did you like school? I loved school. You loved school. What what did you I love? I loved to read. Okay. I still do. You do, yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. So reading was your favorite subject. Reading. Reading, yeah. Okay. And uh, did you make a lot of friends, or were did were your neighbors close by, or were they far away? The the closest neighbor was right across the road. Right? Okay. Just over the hill. Mm -hmm. So did you have? Quite a few friends, or was it just? Well, they just they just neighbors. We went to school together. Mm -hmm. They walked to school okay. with, and we had a family um, down at the lower end of that field. Mm -hmm. There's a house down there where the football. But you know where the football mm -hmm. field is. Right? Yeah. 
or they were the house there. And uh, we went, that was a neighbor down there. So mm -hmm. we had close neighbors. The woods were full of them when I grew up because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the war was going on and, and uh, there wasn't no money. So the ones that uh, just moved back and yeah. moved in the woods, you know. So. What, was, what was school like and going to school like in the wintertime? In the wintertime, walking to school, but also uh, in school, we, it had to be cold. I mean, I'm sure it, you had a. We um, we went to school, and the weather was bad back then. They can say what they want to, mm -hmm. but. Um, yeah, you don't get much snow now. I've seen the river freeze mm -hmm. over. I never did see them. It freeze over enough that you could drive a horse and wagon across mm -hmm. or sled, but. It did freeze over. Now you take a river like <laughs> Ohio, nearly as big as the Ohio, when it flooded, mm -hmm. and it freeze over. It was cold, mm -hmm. and we lived here in a three-room house. We had a fireplace, and uh, it's still in there. It's still the same old chimney, and and then we had a stove in the other room, and uh, that's what we heated the house with. Well, when I was growing up, and this wasn't no different. We all lived, everybody lived the same way, believe it or not. There wasn't no rich people here. Right. Some people in the bottom had a little bedroom we did, that, but uh, they had maybe more chickens or, or uh, mm -hmm. another uh, more cow. We had two and maybe they had three, you know, or something like that. But they's all the same thing. I have seen the water bucket. We, we didn't have a pump or nothing. Um, we drew the water out of the well, and he set it on the sink in there. Get up in the morning, and the dipper would be froze in the water bucket. Yeah. Now that's in the winter time. Mm -hmm. I have seen the coffee pot sitting on the stove, and Mom would have to build a fire in the cooking stove. We burnt wood mm -hmm. to throw the coffee pot out. Now it got that cold in the house. Yeah. Do Do you remember when you got running water? In running water, yeah. I, me and Roosevelt, my brother Roosevelt, put it in. That was in uh, in the sometime in the sixties. In the sixties, so you were already gone. Oh yeah. You came back and yeah. and and put it in for put your in mom, mom in and dad. Well. Yeah, put in the okay. pump in the well and put in a bathroom mm -hmm. and everything. So, what about electricity? Do you remember? Electricity come in in nineteen. Uh, February, January 1952. I bet you couldn't believe it, could you? I bet you just couldn't believe the difference. No, and <laughs> when the words were held. 1952, you said? Okay. 52. Okay. I was 17 years old. Okay. Right. And, and took pneumonia trying to blow the light out. But <laughs> they, they had a porch light. And back then, y'all would blow the lamp out. It was okay. a kerosene lamp. We've got them around here mm -hmm. now. If anybody's interested yeah. in them. So instead of flipping that switch, you'd have to blow the light out. Yeah. yeah okay. So I got pneumonia trying to blow the light out. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, no, that's... Uh, uh, and uh, the first thing we got was a refrigerator. Had to have that refrigerator. Yeah. So, <laughs> what else was unique about your childhood that we can't even fathom today and, uh, that you can think of? That's, um, I guess, uh, the way we had to live, I guess, mm -hmm. um, starting out with is our dress code, if you want to call it that, or the way we so, uh, had two pair of pants or two pair of overalls. Mm -hmm. One is work, one is school. And um, you, and a little later, when you wore out uh, the school clothes, you got them for work. Mm -hmm. You know, and so uh, yeah. uh, when you come home from school, you change clothes. Mm -hmm. You went barefooted to the fall. And even sometimes after frost, you didn't get no shoes in the summertime. Yeah. From spring to fall. But you had uh, shoes to, for school. You, you went barefoot. Yeah. Everybody did. Okay. You went barefoot yeah. in school. 
over the rock bar mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, yeah. Maybe some kid, you know, had shoes for a mm-hmm. while, like the storekeeper down here, yeah. his boy had them. But, mm-hmm. he, but there wasn't very many yeah. that didn't go barefoot. What was Christmas like as a uh, small child down here? We we didn't have much of a Christmas, but I do remember um, Christmas Day when mm-hmm. old Sammy called. Okay, him, you know, uh, we'd hang our stockings up. Now this is the kids, mm-hmm. and we hang our stockings up on the mantel. Well, we get up on Christmas Day, and we had an apple, and an orange, and a banana, mm-hmm. and a bar of candy. And sometimes we had a little toy, maybe a little car, a hot mm-hmm. wheel. I mean, it's a forerunner mm-hmm. of a, a yeah. hot wheel. Yeah. And, but now that was for Christmas Day. But Mom always had plenty to eat for Christmas Day. She had two or three cakes. And she cracked walnuts, black walnuts. We'd get her in the fall, and she'd sit and crack them when she had mm-hmm. time. And then she sold them to buy her Christmas stuff. She got 50 cents for a quart of walnuts. For a quart of walnuts? And carried them to Monticello to sell. Okay. Now Interesting, that. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what, what might you have gotten for your birthday? For your birthday? Didn't even know what came Didn't even know what came. <laughs> Is that right? Now, yeah. After I got grown yeah. and right. she could afford it, she yeah. made me a cake. Yeah. That was... Mm-hmm. We've done grown. Yeah. How, how did you get your news? You said there was really no newspaper early on. I know later you said you delivered a newspaper, but but where did you get the world's stories from? You didn't have a radio for a while. No. Um, the neighbor. The neighbor, okay. The neighbor had radio. Okay. And if anything, I remember when uh, uh, the Roosevelt got. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, the President Roosevelt. President Roosevelt, okay. President. The neighbor come down here and made the special trip. He lived uh, about a mile and a half up the road. Mm-hmm. Well, he got on his old mule and come down and told that mm-hmm. the President got killed. Uh, or, got, or he, he died, died yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. And, uh, but we did have a radio part of the time, mm-hmm. and it's an old mm-hmm. uh, battery radio. Yeah. And it was different from... The first radio we ever had was a big, stood up about that high. You said, I oh, think yeah. you've oh, got yeah. one. Oh, yeah. You've got an electric car. Mm-hmm. You used to have it. You used to have it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And this was a battery operator. Mm-hmm. And it took two batteries for it. Mm-hmm. One of them was a uh, telephone battery. Uh, before, back in the teens, we had telephone. Mom said they had telephones in, your, in the teens before the depression in the okay. 20s and then during the depression they just closed them they got mm-hmm. rid of them but uh, they had a nine nine volt battery yeah and a two volt battery yeah <laughs> this is the funny part they take a six volt car battery and your dad remembers them old six volt and you could cut them apart and get a two volt out of them <laughs> because it's three different sections. Yeah. So they use a nine volt and a two volt mm-hmm. to power uh, to power that old radio. Uh-huh. And you had an antenna out of a copper wire. You stretch a copper wire out there, and yeah. you had ground. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, in, in dry weather, you had to get the ground mm-hmm. wire wet. It would mm-hmm. it wouldn't come on if you didn't have a mm-hmm. Good ground, so we pour water on the ground for to get it. But that was, uh, you use that radio maybe once a day. I was going to say, you'd have to be very careful as to when you have it on because you wouldn't want to run the battery down. And I remember um, there was a guy lived up the road and uh, he had a water wheel with a generator. And they could charge a battery. Mm-hmm. They would catch rainwater for the battery. It's just a car battery. It would liquid, you know, mm-hmm. wet cell, like all of And I'd ca- take that battery up there on Saturday morning and get him to charge it. He'd just hook it up and let the water wheel run okay. and, and charge that battery up. Yeah. And then we could listen to the 
music for yeah. a little while. So what, what did you listen to that you really remember that you look forward to? The On the radio? Yeah. After we got some... Uh, not, it, then after that old radio, Dad bought one. He bought a Crosley. Okay. During the war. Yeah. Uh, things got a little better and you could, during the war, things picked up and you mm. could get a job and stuff like that. But he bought one. And of course, it was battery operated also, but it was a one battery. And the, we had, there was a show on. And some of the old people might remember it. Your dad might, but it was a, a, a black show. Mm -hmm. They called it uh, the Beulah Show. The Beulah Show. The Beulah Show. Okay. And dad had to listen to that of a night. Mm -hmm. He'd come on at 6 o'clock. Well, we were having supper about 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so he always listened to the Bureau show. So mm -hmm. 15 minutes. Of, mm -hmm. you know. well, was it a comedy or was it uh, music? It or? was like a family. It was a family. Oh, okay, just going through their, their story. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. You know, like Archie Bunker. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. <laughs> and, and then what I really liked was the Lone Ranger. Lone and, Ranger, yeah. And um, Shadow. Yeah, I'm going to do and, channel. Uh, Bobby Benson, B. Barbie. Oh, I still remember them old shows. I don't remember that one. I mean, I never heard of that one. You never heard of them? No. They've done there somewhere. Okay. okay. And, and you were telling me that you would listen to stations as far as Del Rio, Texas. And Del Rio, Texas, and Chicago. Chicago. The barn dances? The old barn dances? Were, did you guys? Yeah, uh, Knoxville. Knoxville. Dad listened when we come in at noon. Um, Knoxville had a, a midday merry go round. You can probably bring it up in the old record, but he had uh, Knoxville had a midday merry go round, mm -hmm. and they was uh, it was live. The entertainers come in and sing. There was no recording or nothing, and Dad had listened to that when we had lunch. Mm -hmm. It lasted for an hour, and he mm -hmm. listened. They called it the midday merry go round, mm -hmm. and the neighbors are whoever just come in and mm -hmm. sing on the radio you know yeah and so and uh, mm -hmm. but then of course on saturday night uh you could listen to a little while the grand old opera but dad and mom went to bed early so you didn't get mm -hmm. to listen to much of the night but so, you did get to listen of the day so you, know? you never had control of the radio you could no, no. you didn't no. have control of the radio Okay. They yeah. they they turn the radio off. Mm -hmm. You turned it off. Yeah. How did you keep items cold, food items during the we, winter and and warm? Right or, across or during the, the road, summer? right across the road, over the hill, and uh, as you can walk over now, it's probably about the same distance from the road to the spring. That's where we got our water for a long mm -hmm. time. If the well went dry, we had to go over and get the water, carry water from the spring. But we had this box built in the branch mm -hmm. in the stream. And the water went through that box. And you had to keep the hogs out and the animals. Keep the hogs out? Okay. Because <laughs> they get in there. Yeah. So it was a big, long box. And we'd take the food and set it in that box. And it would keep it cool. That's where we kept the milk. Mm -hmm. And if uh, now was that your property? Was no, that wasn't our property. So, so did other families do that too? It, if they wanted to use it, yeah. they used it okay. too. Yeah, there's a family over there. Okay. But uh, they didn't have a cow, so they didn't mm -hmm. have milk. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that was the way mm -hmm. we kept it cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if if you cooked, if mom cooked a meal and it, she's afraid it would ruin before supper mm -hmm. we carried whatever was left over mm -hmm. there and put it in the spring box mm -hmm. uh, everybody you know that's some people live close to a cave and they can put it in the cave mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but we had a spring box okay you didn't you didn't have a, a cellar at that time or anything that underground that you would put it in to no no okay. no Okay. No, we didn't. That was all we had. And, mm -hmm. uh, how, how would you how would you sum up your childhood? Would you think it was uh, 
everybody should live a childhood like that or it was rough. How would you sum it up? I, I, you know, it was a good experience, I guess. And, um, it took me and my brother probably 40 years to grow mm -hmm. up, to, re mm -hmm. to realize that there's more to life yeah. than what we were doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And everybody acted that way. Um, Believe it or not, when you was growing up, you went to church. You mm -hmm. you go to church, and most of the boys wanted to try to pick up a girl mm -hmm. and walk her home. There were no cars. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a few cars, but you couldn't afford mm -hmm. them. So you walked to church, and you could walk the girl home, man, mm -hmm. uh, of a night after church. Yeah. But uh, I've known people say, "Let's get us a bottle of whiskey and go to church." Mm -hmm. Now that was. That was a big yeah. to do. That's the only place you went. The church was really the social event. It was the a time. social event. Yeah. And the men stayed outside. A lot of them drank. They uh -huh. wouldn't hardly go in. Really? A few of them would. Yeah. And, uh -huh. But the women went in uh -huh. and a few of the old men. But the younger men stayed outside. They drank or gambled and uh -huh. chewed. Crap or whatever. I did not. Never heard that. Never heard that. You you never heard no, of that. No, that's the way it was. Yeah. And uh, uh, and they'd fight. They'd do a little of everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But uh, that was the social. That was the only. Mm -hmm. How how far did you go into school? How, how, what I went level? Through the eighth grade. Through the, was it at the same school all the time, all the way through the eighth grade? Yeah, it was just a regular elementary school. Okay. Part of the mm -hmm. time I went six years in uh, down in the valley mm -hmm. for each bottom school, mm -hmm. and then I went to the last two years up here. Okay. Uh, so in '49, I. So uh, after the eighth grade, then what, what did you do? Uh, Worked here at the yeah, house. Well, just yeah. Well, after the eighth grade, well, uh, if there's anything to do, like Dad tended the crops, you worked mm -hmm. here. Well, if you had a day off and some one of the neighbors needed you, mm -hmm. you worked for him, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And that wasn't unusual? People would go through the eighth grade? No. Okay. A lot of them had never finished the eighth yeah. grade. Whose decision was that? Was that your parents? Or it would have to have been your parents' decision, right? Well, it was the law that... So you had to go through at least... Either okay. 16 or graduate the eighth grade. Okay. But the law says... And... <laughs> I know this to happen. They'd sign up every year. You go to school the first day. You get your book and everything. And then some of them would never go back again. Okay. They didn't try to force mm -hmm. them to go to school or nothing. Right. But uh, okay. until they got 16 mm -hmm. and then that. Did you, would you have wanted to go further or that was just, that was just life at that time? That was, uh, if, if I, um, now, I had a teacher, Miss Estel uh, Hatfield. She was a spinster. She, had never, she never did marry. And, uh, but uh, she wanted me to go over to uh, Richmond. Richmond, Kentucky. Okay. Yeah, Richmond. And go to that. They had a school over there at the high school, or at the college, mm -hmm. that you could work your way through high school. You okay. stayed on campus, and you had to work your way. Mm -hmm. You took care of the kitchen. You pulled KP mm -hmm. in the kitchen, or you painted. Or you, they kept you busy while mm -hmm. you wasn't in class. Mm -hmm. You paid for your eats and school, but working at your mm -hmm. school. They didn't harm no. Uh, were, were there no high schools in this area? Were there any high schools in, in this area? Over at Monticello. Monticello. Okay. And... Um, uh, but the time in '49, mm -hmm. the lake had done started in, mm -hmm. and I would have had to went to Monticello mm -hmm. and stayed over mm -hmm. because you couldn't get across the, mm -hmm. the lake ever. You know, yeah. just a rowboat, you couldn't get across the lake. But before the lake came in, that people walked to Monticello and went to school. Mm -hmm. High school now they actually walked okay. from the, the ones that could afford the high school. Okay. They walked from Marcella High mm -hmm. and uh, went to high school. 
but Miss Esther was an informational librarian, and I well, I'd have been 15 when it started, and Dad said, no, I won't sign for him. Because mm -hmm. he had to sign, he said, no, I won't sign for him, he don't need to go. So I didn't get to go to high school, but I got my GED when I went in the yeah. service. So. Yeah. So I, I always like to ask this question because it, it, it gives me an idea as to what you really enjoyed growing up. Were, were there any heroes of yours or did you have any dreams of becoming anything when you were about 13, 14 years old? I, as far as I can remember, I had no... Uh, you didn't know what was out there? No. Yeah. No. You know, mm -hmm. Living like we did, I don't yeah. think any of us, right. or some of us thought of maybe of the Marine Corps when we mm -hmm. read the comic books or, okay. or, you know. So so you just thought it would be natural for you just to stay around here, be yeah. farm the land, get a job, yeah, not go anywhere else. Uh, okay. That's the way they grew mm -hmm. up, and, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you remember your first car? My first car? Yeah. I remember the first one I was intending to buy. <laughs> okay, good enough. What was that? <laughs> and my brother, I didn't have driver's license, my, but I was working, and I, uh, I was going to buy this old car. So uh, we did the, well, the junkyard, but he had cars for sale, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I believe it's 70, 50 or $75 for a car. And uh, so my brother was going to sign for me and let me work it out. Now, that's Marvin, that's one okay. that took care of me. Right, right. And uh, he was driving it, test driving it. And some two soldiers come through a drink and, and hit us before we got back oh. and tore the car up. So I didn't yeah. buy it. But okay. my first car I ever owned was a 37 Dodge. 37 Dodge. 37 Dodge. And then a uh, 47 Buick, mm -hmm. 47 Pontiac. Yeah. Forty-six Ford. Okay. <laughs> now, my my dad went into the service. Uh, if I've got this right, I think when he was sixteen years old or something like that. Uh, I think kind of lied about his age. But did did you lie about your age, or did you no, not go no, in? No, until... I was old enough. You're old enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, me and me and a buddy, and he done dead. And, but we went up when I was nineteen, and. Uh, he went up, and uh, we said, he said, let's join the Navy, or Army, and okay. I said, okay. So, just so like we that. Okay. Well, wait a minute. So you said, okay, and I know you were 19, so I guess you didn't have to, but what was the discussion about with your mom and dad about that? Do you remember My that? My dad didn't hear one way or the other. I'd done Okay, it. okay. You know? <laughs> but Mom, of course, I didn't even tell her I was going. Okay, all right. I, and I, but we went up there and took the test. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't make enough to go in the Army. And so they said, well, you can go in the Navy. Mm -hmm. The Navy didn't require that much. Okay. Uh, IQ, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess you call it IQ. Too pitied or something. Right. But, but he, um, and I said, no, I don't want the Navy. He mm -hmm. said, I'm going to the Navy. So he went in the Navy and I came back. Well, I got back and mom had to go in the, she got sick and had to go in the hospital, went to Lexington and and had operation and her stomach operated on and sis took out and a whole bunch of stuff. So I didn't go, I put it off. Mm -hmm. And after she got home and, and I could take care of herself, uh, I went and served with that. Mm -hmm. But then I was already 20. So. And you went into the Army? I you went not. Yeah. Yeah. So why, why did you do that? Was it a profession to you? Did you want to see the world? They, they, in 1958, there were no jobs. Okay. Uh, uh, that was when I was in her. Mm -hmm. After the war, mm -hmm. you know, the bottom fell out of everything. You mm -hmm. couldn't buy a job. Okay. You could work around here all day for three dollars. Right. And so me and hey, my brother-in-law now, Freeman, mm -hmm. uh, we went. Uh, one day was was that. I'll have to tell it. Okay. We, 
with that store on Sunday evening, and we'd been in Bibbin, I guess. A little bit, okay. The night before on Saturday night. Anyway, okay. was <laughs> there in the, we'd been playing croquet at, at the store on Sunday. Both of us, I guess, had a hangover. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is no life. He said, let's go on. Let's go on army. I said, okay. <laughs> You, you had a hangover, but you were sober, right, when you made that decision? Okay. I guess you'd call it a hangover. We were on the field. Didn't we? well, well, Fre does Freeman remember this? Yeah, okay. Freeman remember. So you went well, in the Army together? I hope he remembers yeah. that. Uh, and so the next morning, uh, his mom and grandma, Freddie, mm -hmm. was going to town. And he said, we'll just ride in with her. So I walked up to Jabez and called him. Didn't even have a car. Then you couldn't even afford gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we went and joined the, in the recruiter. He said, when did you want to go after? I'd already took the test, so I was mm -hmm. okay. But Freeman took the test. And the recruiter said, when did you want to go? Freeman said, when can we? He said, the first bus out of here. That, that day? In that day. Were you ready to go? Yeah, I just... Were, were you yeah. nervous at all? Yeah. Or you just um, you were ready to go? I was ready to go, mm -hmm. yeah. You had mentioned Freeman and, and, and Reddy, and obviously that's your wife's Betty's brother and mother. So you knew Betty, your wife, in, in whenever I, growing up, is that right? I didn't know her then. She, she wasn't nothing but a little kid then. So even when you were 19 went to the service, you didn't really know her? When I was 19, she wasn't but 12 or 13. Okay. All right. And that wasn't dating age. Okay. So I guess we'll get to where where you met her shortly. But uh, where where were you shipped to in, when you went to the service? Uh, the first the first duty was the Port Landerwood. Missouri? Yeah. Okay. How was basic Six training? Armored. How was basic training? Was it summertime? I, um, well, we went in September, September, and before we got our basic training over, you had two months of basic training, basic, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, but the time we got her, when our basic training over, the water would freeze in your canteen and the pup tents, that <laughs> little old pup tent, yeah. and the water would, you had the canteen mm -hmm. of water there, mm -hmm. and it would actually freeze in that, yeah. You know, now that's how cold it was. Well, we survived that. I never had it so good, I don't think, as I did in the Army, the mm -hmm. basic training. I went in, when I went in the service, I weighed 128 pounds. And I wore a size 28, 30 pounds. 28 around the waist, mm -hmm. 30 in length. When I got out of basic training, I weighed 148 pounds. I gained 20 pounds in basic training. That was the first time I could ever remember I could have three meals a day. So it wasn't as much muscle. <laughs> it was it was eating that did that. It was because it, you never had we that. We got up. Now our basic training is different than now, and your dad knows that. Yeah. Um, they come around at five o'clock and woke you up. Mm -hmm. Well, you better be out there at six o'clock, standing right. in formation, done mm -hmm. shaved and everything. Yeah. But then your day started at six o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. where you had breakfast, and and you stayed busy all day. You mm -hmm. know, of course, like everything else. But uh, you eat, and I never, when I was growing up. You mm -hmm. didn't know a lot of times you never know where you're gonna yeah. get your next meal. Right. You know, I worked in the logwood and I wasn't by myself as everybody else. You'd take a bonus sandwich, can of pork and beans and you and some crackers, and that was your meal for mm -hmm. dinner because there wasn't no restaurant, there right. wasn't nothing else, right. you know. Just something to get yeah. you through. But yeah. when I went in the service they uh, mm -hmm. they the meal is there. Yeah. And uh, uh, a lot of people, those mm -hmm. boys uh, yeah. got grafted, you know, they mm -hmm. from a better family, you yeah. know, or re more mm -hmm. richer family, I'd say. They told off on the food. I thought it was the best stuff I ever had in my life. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, so there was no active war going on at that time, right? No, it, the Korean War was over. Korean War was over, but yet you went to Panama. Yeah, well, I went to Fort Lee, Virginia next. Fort Lee, okay. The second. Okay. Uh, is that training. is that where you were? What were you training for? Uh, quartermaster. Quartermaster. And then uh, I went over and stayed two months, and uh, I think it was. March or April, something like that. Uh, they sent me to Panama. Uh, seemed like it was five, less than six months from the time I joined mm -hmm. till I was on the ship or going over to Panama. Okay. And uh, rode an old troop ship over. Took us two weeks <laughs> to two weeks. go to. Uh, to what, what was that experience like? What was that experience like being on there for oh, two weeks? Oh man, you had to pull guard duty. They worked on mm -hmm. that ship. Yeah. They had to pull KP, mm -hmm. that kitchen police. And, but uh, you had to pull that, and you had to pull guard duty. And mm -hmm. we hit a typhoon and or a hurricane or whatever. Everybody on there was sick. Mm -hmm. And it lasted about three days. <laughs> so at that point, did you wonder what you, what you got yourself into? Well, you didn't even think. Didn't even think about it? No, you didn't even think. I, I wow. didn't. How, were you homesick? It never bothered me one bit. How were you able to communicate with your, your family? Just through letters? Yeah, uh, I wrote mom every week. But you were on a ship, me. right? For two months. Yeah. So was that, wasn't that was that more challenging? What? Uh, getting getting letters out to home? No. No? no it just, uh, uh, we had a mailman, and you just wrote your letter and mm -hmm. took it down to the little old post office in the barracks. And but I mean, when you when you are when you're on the ship, I mean. Oh, on the ship, yeah. we didn't. Just didn't write. Uh, you didn't write home. Yeah. We told her. I told her was mm -hmm. going out, and mm -hmm. uh, and you didn't write for two weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. and then uh, it, like I said, it took us two weeks and, uh, to get down there, and then that's just to Panama, so you know mm -hmm. how slow we was going. Yeah. And uh, so I got down there and stayed 30, almost 30 months. 30 months, okay. And, what, what was that experience like? Did you enjoy that? Oh, I love Panama. If it hadn't been for my family, I'd just have mom, my brother, my sister, everyone mm -hmm. I'm wrote want me to come home and mm -hmm. come home because I'd love to stay down. Yeah. I loved it down there. And what did you do in Panama? Um, a little of everything. They couldn't keep me up. Mm -hmm. Couldn't keep me straight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was a company carpenter. I was school bus guard. I was trained to drive a school bus. Uh, you I mean for the for, for, for the Panama children? Uh, no, American. For, they was a uh, uh, civil service kid. Okay. And a lot of them was married to a Panamanian. And so you, they okay. hey, Yeah, and you drove the school bus. Know, Papery. and the army had to furnish the, mm -hmm. the bus for the civilians. Okay. Okay. And, uh, mm -hmm. and they had me. They had to be <coughs> since the military family. Mm -hmm. They had to have a military guy on the bus, okay. civilian driver. And if he couldn't make it, we trained to mm -hmm. drive the bus. Or if something mm -hmm. happened to him, we could still deliver mm -hmm. the kids. That was your idea. And what was the American, what was the U.S. interest in Panama at the time that it was important for us to be down there? Um, Do you remember? They loved the Americans. They yeah. was good. To yeah. us. But why would we have, why would we send you to Panama? What was the, what was the reason America would send people to Panama at the time? Do you know? Uh, what was the region we down there? Yes, yes. We. We had a 50-year contract, I believe it's 50 or 100 year or something. Okay. And we had to protect that. Oh, okay. We had to protect the canal. The canal mm -hmm. went uh, 50 miles from the Atlantic to the mm -hmm. Pacific, and uh, we that was our job to protect the the canal. They had mm -hmm. uh, uh, several bases down there. Mm -hmm. I was in ordnance down there, and of course that's part of the quartermaster. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in ordnance, but uh, that uh, they had the infantry and they had the air force and they had the, everybody, you know. Yeah. 
So you, go ahead. They, uh, uh, in the old saying, you could go from coach to coach in, in an hour. I could drive from coach to coach in an hour. <laughs> Landing to the Pacific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so 30 months in Panama, is that what you said? 50 miles. But 30 months you spent yeah, in Panama? around 30 months. Okay, yeah. what was after that? I got discharged when I got back. From the service you were yeah. done? Okay. Yeah, they sent me to Fort Dix, New Jersey. Okay, and, and you could I have re-upped if you wanted to. You could have got another term if you wanted to, yeah, but you I didn't. Could, yeah, they, I could have joined. Yeah. And um, I thought about it, and uh, they said, well, you've got 30 days mm -hmm. to make up your mind. That's what the recruiter told me. He said, you got 30 days. And he said, you can come back in in 30 days with your rank. Mm -hmm. And same thing, and mm -hmm. uh, your same same MOS and all, and uh, so. But after a sure thirty days, I bought an old car and I was mm -hmm. probably uh, chasing the girls yeah. or something. So you were back home for the thirty yeah, day I was leave. Back home yeah. Here. Um, so at that point, you decided to stay here. What? What? How did you make a living? What was your job? Uh, here. Yes. Uh, just, just odd jobs here and there. Yeah, just odd jobs. Yeah, because they still won in uh, in you know in fifty eight. Like I said, in fifty five to fifty eight, they won no job. No, they just won no job. Mm -hmm. And uh, they started hiring uh, in fifty seven. They started hiring soldiers in the uh, the factory. Mm -hmm. But they give the soldiers the first choice, so, so, uh, and you couldn't hardly, if you know somebody already in the factory, they might help you get in mm -hmm. in '57. But that was it. Okay. You know. So, so you're back here. So sooner or later, you meet Betty, or, or at least uh, start dating. Right? Yeah. Was it shortly after you came back? Yeah. Was it soon after you came back yeah. when you met, uh, or when you started? Dating Betty? Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> Freeman got discharged. Okay. And so me and him had been the first time I ever recognized ever paid attention to Betty. Mm -hmm. She's a she's a woman man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I went home with Freeman. We'd been out mm -hmm. as usual of doing something we shouldn't have. Yeah. And <laughs> and I went home with him. And stayed all night. Okay. And I got up the next morning, and Betty come in the living room. We sat in the living room, and I remember telling her, "I said I'm gonna marry you." No way. <laughs> and really, and, what was her reaction? And, uh, Do you remember? She didn't pay no attention to me. <laughs> but you <laughs> had. Grandma might have been yeah, yeah, yeah. But you had a little crush on her, huh? Okay. And she, oh, she pretty. Oh, I know, I know, I know. And uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. and then oh, it probably right a while later before we even mm -hmm. dated, you know, mm -hmm. probably two or three do, months. Do you remember a first date or anything that? I mean, I, I know back then. I don't know if you uh, yeah you would have gone to movie theaters, right? Back yeah. Then drive-in theaters. That, the first date uh, always a uh, was cold weather, so we didn't go yeah. to drive-in. Okay. Uh, and Freeman was aimed to go to the movie. Mm -hmm. And so I said, can I take Betty with us? And he said, I don't care if she'll go. <laughs> so I asked her, would she go to the movie with me and Freeman? Yeah. And she said, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, she went to the movie with us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we started dating. But Grandma sent one of the boys with us every time. Okay. You know, unless even if if I took her out to church. When you say grandma, her yeah. her, her mother, her mother. Yeah, grandma. Okay. Um, the, the I guess the first real date, and the, she knows about it. Mm -hmm. Somebody brought her to church. Some guy brought her to church. I don't even know who it was, and she probably forgot now. But anyway, mm -hmm. they come to church, and they were sitting in church. Well, he got up. 
probably in church help for two hours. Probably he probably, he probably needed to smoke mm -hmm. or a drink or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. So he got up and goes outside. And now that's nothing unusual back then. Yeah. Just in and out all okay. the time. And when he got up and left, I went and sat down by him. Oh, you made the move. Okay. <laughs> when he come back, I sat with him. <laughs> what did he say? And I asked her, I said, can I take you home? And she said, yeah. Well, do you remember what, the, what the, did that guy do? Anything? Yeah, yeah he didn't no, do nothing. Okay. He wasn't from around. He's okay. from another place. He's mm -hmm. from over towards uh, uh, Russell's Pine. Okay. And how long did you date before you got married? How long did you date before you actually got married? Um, I mean, about... Let's see. Gosh, I, I guess it's... Probably in 58, and then we got married in mm -hmm. 60. Did, did you have a ring? No. No? Okay. Well, it wasn't, I, I was know. just a yeah. dating, and she could date somebody if yeah. she wanted to. Because she mm -hmm. went to Indiana and yeah, okay. before I did. We went up there, and uh, um, well, a bunch of us went up mm -hmm. there in 59. And mm -hmm. pretty soon after I got it. And worked a while. We worked on them. Church and, yeah. and the guy I was working for, a holiday come up, mm -hmm. and he says, I want everybody in here on Monday. And I said, you ain't getting me on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> that was a holiday. I said, you ain't getting me on Monday. Yeah. How far anybody's not in here on Monday. So there's five of us, I think, come to Kentucky. We didn't go in on Monday. He let us work all week then the four days. Mm -hmm. Give us a double check. <laughs> okay. He borrowed it. He, he, he did borrow it. He did borrow where, where was this at? Where were you working at the time? I worked in a construction building house. Okay. But you so were up. I, you so were up. Man, Freeman come back. Okay. But you were in Indiana at some point doing construction? Yeah, it's in Indianapolis. Oh, it was up there. Okay. Yeah, it okay. was in Indianapolis. Okay. Well, and, but then she. She she wanted to work and mm -hmm. and um, uh, I don't think yeah maybe she was still working but mm -hmm. anyway we uh, we come back and she's still out there that's right she's still up there and then Freeman come back and, mm -hmm. and thought we was going to uh, bootleg or sell booze mm -hmm. and make a living. <laughs> we bought her paychecks and then and drank it all yeah, <laughs> and yeah. didn't sell nothing. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. but that was life. Do do you remember asking her to marry you, or was it just assumed that you were well, going I, to get married? Oh, I probably asked her a dozen times, <laughs> and she kept. <laughs> this is very interesting, by the way. <laughs> she finally said, "Yeah." Uh, and, but uh, yeah, well, good. Katrin, and you've been married, I, I hate to even ask you how long, because you may not remember, but a long time. You've been married a long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so 62 years. How many? 62. 62 years. So you're up at uh, Indianapolis. So tell me a little bit about that, because I, as, I, as I remember, several people from Kentucky went up to work from, from around here. Yeah. Your family even went up to work. Oh, yeah. How did that come about? Um, in 59, they started construction, building houses, because the economy had picked up then. Okay. We had a uh, different mm -hmm. leadership, okay. you know, and, and so the economy started mm -hmm. growing. And uh, in course, 60, it was a 60 and 61, 62 was a boom. Right. Year. Right. But in '59, they started building. The factory started opening up and everything. But I went to that was in uh, I went to Chevrolet in '59, September '59. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you and others in your, for instance, Bob. Bob he, was he ended, in Cincinnati. Yeah, he was in Cincinnati. Ended up at Ford, right? Yeah. He was with Ford. And how many members of your family went to General Motors? Um, uh, well, <laughs> me and Rose, I went, me and Freeman went first. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Betty's uncle was there, and, and Roosevelt went, and 
And then, of course, all the younger boys ended mm-hmm. up there, you know. And, but uh, uh, but me and Freeman went uh, went mm-hmm. to General Motors first. So, uh, we started in, I started in September, and he came in, it's Labor Day. I'll have to tell you this. You might not want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, silly and stupid nice. I'm not bright and young. Just and young. Yeah. It's history. Yeah. You know? And young, yeah. And if you read history, mm-hmm. you'll know there's a lot mm-hmm. of stupid, yeah. people, stupid mm-hmm. people. But anyway, I had an old car here. And um, it's Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Labor Day week. So I was going up the road. I was on. Uh, they were having something to do, I think, up at Jabez Church or something. Anyway, I I decided I'd go up there. Well, I was going up the road, and um, before you get to the county line, before you get to burn, you climb that steep hill, or you come around the bottom mm-hmm. and go up. Well, when I top that hill, I looked down at the thermometer, or the speedometer. Mm-hmm. I was running 70. Mm-hmm. So I got around the curve, and there said a guy with an old car, all the doors open, him had the roadblock. Hmm. And he's standing in front of one door, you know, behind one door, mm-hmm. and she's standing, the old woman is standing in front of the other door. Mm-hmm. So if I'd have hit that car, I'd have killed mm-hmm. both of them. Right, you know? right. So all I'd done is just cut that car as hard as I could, mm-hmm. and I took off down through the woods. Okay. And I drove about far more to the road down through the woods, missing trees. Finally hit a root rod and stopped. But I went through between two trees, and I never will forget that. I didn't know convertible. Mm-hmm. But the car was trying to turn over. He mm-hmm. tilted it up. And when my brother, I just got out of it and walked off and, and told uh, Marvin, I said, you can have the car. I said, mm-hmm. if you want to pull it out, you can have it. I'm, I, I don't want it anymore. But when he had to pull it out and come in between them trees, he tore the fender off. And they, that was that close. Hmm. Yeah. If I'd have hit them trees. That yeah, time. So, and I thought the Lord had to be a garden. Well, you know, everybody always talks about you having nine lives because you've had some health issues and bounced back and healthiest he's been a long time. But that was maybe the first. Right? Of, of the nine lives. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And oh, wow. The, the Army's probably got four or five of them. But, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but that was, uh, uh, and I never thought nothing about it. So uh, mm-hmm. Freeman was then. And I had to go, I run into him. Uh, it wasn't long till everybody was there, you know. And, mm-hmm. and he said, go to Indiana with me. He said, I'm going back this afternoon. That was on Sunday morning. Or he said, I'm going back tomorrow. That was on Monday, Labor Day. He said, go to Indiana with me. Mm-hmm. He said, you can stay in my room and you get a job. And so he said, Chevrolet's a horn if you want a job in Chevrolet. So the next day, he come down here and I threw my suitcase in the car and went to Indiana. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I know our batteries are going to wear out before too long. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to kind of watch, so we may have to do two segments here. But uh, so, so you're up at uh, Indiana, Indianapolis. So the living conditions, not not conditions, but situation, I guess. Uh, as, as I recall, you showed me the house house or two that you lived in up in Indianapolis, and uh, it was it was almost like a community in the house, wasn't yeah. it? Tell me a little bit about that. Um, that was, we all gathered up in one house on 20th Street. Mm-hmm. And if you go through there now, it's going to tell what it'd be like, right. but it's 20th and Central. And it was a big room in the house. I don't know how many apartments they had. And uh, we ran an apartment. This is one we worked in construction. They were five or six of us in a two room apartment. And I think they charge something like twelve or fifteen dollars a, uh, a week. I believe it's twelve dollars a week for, you know. So divided that between 
between six or eight. Okay. <laughs> so you were able to afford that. And, uh, yeah. and we'd work in construction. Well, somebody, Roosevelt or Arnold won. Uh, I've met his brother, Arnold. Mm -hmm. And um, they'd pick their sandwiches. So we'd, we all worked together and worked for one out there mm -hmm. building a house. And just uh, yeah. eight or ten hillbillies on <laughs> yeah. building one house. And probably probably have, had a party or two every now and then, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. But uh, all the living conditions, when we, I think the me and Freeman roomed together for about a small while. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, so one of us got married, we lived together, roomed mm -hmm. together. And we get the two room lighthouse keeping, what they call the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. It had the kitchen and a bedroom. And that's all it had. Mm -hmm. Well, now that's where we his bread box. Because yeah. <laughs> but we didn't think nothing about it. Right. You know, yeah. you know, okay. you know how yeah. that was when you grow up. Yeah. Yeah. And we, but I believe it was twelve dollars a week. Wow. For that loud loud mm -hmm. housekeeping. We didn't pay nothing but that twelve dollars. Yeah. Wow. Well, um I, of course where Lynn lived and David grew up, it was in uh between Shelbyville and Franklin, but yeah. Where did you live when Lynn was born? Was that we lived we lived in Annapolis on Alabama Street. Okay, so and so I hear that was a, a night that was uh, I, it was December twelfth. So weather could have been anything, but it was not good, was it? It was. <laughs> they was outside, and she wasn't going to make it easy on I, you, was she? Lynn was came early. Mm -hmm. She six or seven months. No, oh, okay. Maybe. I don't. Okay. She's real early, mm -hmm. and because she had to stay in the incubator for mm -hmm. to gain her to gain her weight back, she didn't come home with me. But anyway, we was out running around, and Betty was, and she slipped and fell. Well, when she fell, she started to labor. Oh, okay. And uh, so okay. Uh, that was at about bedtime. So the next morning, five o'clock. She mm -hmm. went into labor. She stayed in labor till six o'clock that evening. Mm -hmm. And the weather was oh, the weather yeah, they had about three yeah. inches of ice. Yeah. <laughs> How far were you from the hospital? It uh, running every red light because you couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. I'd say it was halfway across Indianapolis. It was mm -hmm. on the east side of Indianapolis, and, okay. and we was in the middle mm -hmm. of Indianapolis. So that was uh, about mm -hmm. half work out. Um, but everything went well with, with the birth? I mean, yeah. Okay. yeah, everything went well. It went good, only we just had to leave him and mm -hmm. incubate him. For how long? About? I don't remember. Uh, I don't know that. But I, I do know the, he charged $100. And I think the hospital bill was $100. You get what you pay for. <laughs> 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 and, I love you, Lynn. <laughs> and when David, uh, the hospital, I think that, well, uh, uh, of course, the insurance, I had insurance long enough then that they mm -hmm. took over when David was born. But the doctor charged 120 when David was born because they had to circumcise. Oh, okay. Yeah, they charged 20 extra yeah. dollars. So, 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 so now you're not talking... Are you talking with insurance? Yeah. It, it, so, so your insurance paid, and then you just had to pay a hundred dollars for Lynn and one hundred twenty for David. Well, I had to, I had to pay the whole amount for Lynn. Okay. Hundred for the hospital, hundred for the doctor. That's all it was. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. And David, you can't walk into a hospital today without spending that. And, and David didn't cost me nothing. Yeah. Because I've been out so long. And, yeah. And the insurance, we started out real with mm -hmm. nothing really with the insurance. Yeah. You know, and that, but in two years mm -hmm. with that contract. Or something. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we got any battery there yet. I mean, let me see that. Yeah, we got just a little bit anyway. So we got a little more. We got a little more. Yeah. Uh, but then with uh, the insurance, it went up. So mm -hmm. it paid for David. Mm -hmm. 
But that was something. Yeah. Did, did you feel like you were ready to become a father, or were you still a kid at heart? Um, was it scary? Really, <laughs> I guess I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, Betty said I saw them, and both yeah. of them, you yeah. know, yeah. probably did. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But uh, I like being a father. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I didn't worry too much about him, and, mm-hmm. and she done the worrying for both of us. Somebody had to, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I never did think anything about Lynn. Mm-hmm. Lynn is just always never. Did. She mm-hmm. just took the car. And, yeah. But I think she told you about the time she had to wreck, didn't she? Uh, maybe. <laughs> if not, Somebody tell me. Somebody opened the door and she tore a door off one guy's car. And, <laughs> No, no, no. You tell me this. Said, tell me the story. She told the guy, she said, "Well, Dad will come see you in the morning." Now, what happened? Though? She, she tore <laughs> a guy's. Yeah, she tore a guy's door off his car. Yeah, she tore the door off of his car. She, she was moving in her vehicle, and uh, he, he said, tried to roll, and he opened the door, and oh, okay. she couldn't. She okay. started to ram him and hit mm-hmm. the door. Yeah. But it anyway, happened. she. This is the best yeah. part. She went. She did too. And she drove the car down the church. And one of the boys, our Sunday school teacher or something, mm-hmm. backed into the car, put a big dent in. Mm-hmm. And he worried to death because he's just a young boy. He worried to death. She said, Oh, don't worry, Dad is going crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's as far as he got. Yeah. Yeah. That's as far as he got. What, what, she didn't get in trouble with that either. Nah, yeah. What, uh, what year did you move? To the house between Shelbyville and Frank. Sixty-five. We moved 65. To, out of town. Moved to Shelbyville okay. in sixty-five. And and you guys were kind of like us. You had a day shift and night shift. Yes. Family, right? Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. I worked. I worked at night. Betty didn't work for a little while after we moved down there. And but I worked uh, uh, the night shift. And when she worked, she worked the day shift. Mm-hmm. And then at one time. We got both got put on the same shift for a little while. Mm-hmm. Whatever shift she is on, in a week I could change. In That's right. Life. That's right. You were flexible. Yeah. So uh, okay. I even went to third shift one mm-hmm. time. She's working days, and I wanted to be with the kids, mm-hmm. so I went on third shift, mm-hmm. and I could get home of the morning before they left for school, and then I was mm-hmm. there when they got out of school. So, so yeah. I. We tried to raise your own kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Maybe it's called your sin. Yeah, well, hey, <laughs> I think it worked out. Worked out okay. <laughs> now, I, I know that, like you said, maybe you didn't worry about Lynn too much, and maybe you didn't worry about David as much, but I'm sure Betty worried about David a lot, right? I mean, yeah. David got himself into situations oh as a lot of uh, teenagers would, and uh, he was a typical teenager, wasn't he? Yeah. He was a typical teenager, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he just. Uh, yeah. uh, maybe Having a fun. little rougher than some yeah. of them because he didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, he stayed with Roosevelt a lot, mm-hmm. and, and Roosevelt was kind of wild back yeah. then. And, so, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, Roosevelt almost adopted him, so, uh, but uh, he was a little. Mm-hmm. Of course, him and Yab broke up like closer than him yeah. and Lynn, really. So when David went into the service, um, I mean, do you even remember being worried at that point? I didn't. I didn't, didn't worry. worry about. Was, was it a good in your part? Was were you completely supportive of that? Yeah. yeah. What was Betty? What was Betty supportive of that? Do you remember the decision for him to I go in? I don't think he even asked. He just asked okay. me what I'd take him up to I don't remember he how he signed up and. Uh, Shelbyville, the recruiter, and I had taken mm-hmm. to Annapolis to catch the bus. Mm-hmm.